My name is Eric Van Horn. I bought my first franchise in my 20s, and since then, I've owned six brands with 25 stores in eight states. I've also helped a thousand people find the right franchise for them. People like us who are not cut out for the nine to five and like to work smarter, not harder. How do we find the right franchise, buy it, grow it, sell it, and how do we do it in a way to own the business without it owning us? Those are the questions, and I'm on a mission to give you the answers. Welcome to Franchise Secrets. Welcome to the Franchise Secrets Podcast. Eric here with my longtime friend, mentor, um, John Hewitt. John, thanks for coming on again. It's my pleasure. Anytime. So, John, we go way back when. Anybody that's heard my origin story, how I got started in franchising, you were the, the one that I wanted to sell franchises with because I knew that you spent an hour with all of the, the franchise development people at four o'clock at uh, you know, five days a week. And I wanted to learn that skill. And I wanted to learn from you because of your experience 18 years ago. Now, here we are 18 years later, and I have more respect for you today than I did back then. I uh, understand the why behind some of the things that you did. And so again, I really appreciate you coming on here again. And I want to dive in to the top 10. You came up with a top 10 list when we were back at, at the, in the tax business. And why did you create the top 10, John's top 10. First of all, let me, let me say this, that Einstein says that genius is making complicated things simple. And in franchising, especially people that are new to franchising, they have stars in their eyes and they think everyone's going to be a superstar and we're going to have the greatest franchise system in the world because they're all going to be Eric Van Horst. Well, they're not all Eric Van Horst. They're Joe Schmo and Sally Smith and average people with average intellect, with average experience, with, with average funds, with, with average education. In order to have a replicable system and, and a successful system, you have to have things that, a system that needs to be followed and you need to break it into its smallest components. And then once you break it into its components, then you need to decide what's essential and what's not important. They say, don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. Well, there's some things that are that are absolutely essential to the success of a franchise that we're, are going to cut them or, or cost them customers. So, for example, one of my top 10 was in the tax business during the 15-week tax season, there's four weeks where we do most of our business. Just four out of the 15 weeks, we do two-thirds of our business in four weeks. So it makes obvious sense to expand your hours to take advantage of that opportunity. Especially, it's, it's a differentiator to the competition. You have to have differentiators to the competition. I mean, if, if we were coming up with a top 10 for David and Goliath, you know, top number one is, <laughs> is don't bring a shield or armor or sword, right? I mean, I mean there, you're not going to win, right? You're going to, you're going to be the 187th guy killed by Goliath. So, it's, it's a number of components that start with, keep it simple. It's, we need to replicate success and we need to decide which of those are the most important. And so expanding hours during those peak weeks added another 10% to the average franchisee. So you have to look at what is the impact. If one of the things was paint your walls blue, right? I mean, that's not going to have a 1% impact. So you need to decide what are the, the impactors, if you will. What are the things that impact it the, the most and focus on those? And if you get those right, then the small stuff will take care of itself. The top 10 eventually became 11. So there's no magic number about the top 10. But there were 10 things that you identified that were really impactful. And I like how you said that, they were impactful. And as you were saying that, I was thinking, it's the things that the franchisees should be focusing on, right? They don't need to be focusing, like you said, on a million different things. If you just get these 10 things right, that's what you need to focus on. So like, as you look at, because you've gone on to, to go way beyond when, in your first two brands, and now you have loyalty brands and you're you know, working with a, lot, is a, a large franchise or multiple brands. What's your perspective on it now? When do you create that? How do you get franchisees involved with that? And at what time? You know, it's the sooner the better. And if you can only think of three, then you you call the top. Uh, 
I actually we're up to 13 now, Eric, in, in the tax base. So I, I figured as long as the top 10 football, college football could have 13 or 14 or 15, then I could have more than 10. But I love the, I love the 10 going down to biblical. I mean, biblical, right? 10 commandments. I love that number. So I think you should strive to, and drive to try to get to 10 and call the top 10, even if it's only the top eight. But there's, it's not too soon to start. I mean, you need to start yesterday. If you have a franchise system and you haven't identified those critical things that they need to focus on, you need to get started immediately. What's the number one step? Like, what would you say for someone they're listening to this, they're a franchisor, because a lot of young franchisors or old franchisors that don't have a top 10 list, they haven't simplified that or communicated that. Where do they even start? Like, what's the starting place for them? You know, I, I haven't thought about how I do what I do. So I'm, I'm going from trying to go back and see how, I, how I've always done that. So, but I would think that I would start from this vantage point. I would sit down with my top franchisees, my top people, and say, how are we different from the competition? How are, I mean, and not subjective. Like anyone, everyone's going to say, oh, we offer better service, right? Or we're friendlier, or everyone's going to say subjective things. Find the objective things that you want to differentiate yourself from the competitor. If, again, if, if David had gone on the, and fought Goliath with the same equipment, he, there's no differentiator. He's going to lose. If you go in, and most of, uh, most people, most franchises are in startup mode and growth mode and, and so you have to have a differentiator. They have to set you apart from the competition. Identify those, those things that set you apart and then emphasize them. Those are the critical components. I like that. Let's say there's a franchisee that their franchisor doesn't have a top 10. I love how the top 10, as a franchisee, it was always in front of our faces. You just got to do these things. And then as a franchisee, I would, you know, I would call and complain. I'm like, hey, John, this isn't working. That's not working. Something's not working. It's got to be the franchise or it's fault. It's the territory. It's this or that and the other. And then you would always bring it back. Eric, top 10, how are you executing them? And you made, at times made me like rate myself. How well am I executing them? Am I a 10 out of 10 on the first one or the second one? And so it was really a good, a good barometer for me to really understand how well am I really executing on the basic 10 things in my business. But let's say a franchisor doesn't have that for a franchisee. And there's a top performing franchisee or somebody that wants to be a top performing franchisee, and they just go and create their own top 10 list. What advice would you have for that person? Well, hopefully there's not a lot of them out, uh, a lot of them out there, but I suspect there are. I, I think that they can go through the same the same thought process as I described. If a franchisor, and there, there's different quality level of franchisors, to be in the top 50% of all franchisors in this country, you only need 20 locations. So there's a lot of losers out there. And there's <laughs> there's been 10,000 franchises that have, franchisors that have started and failed in the last decade, 10,000. And there's only 3,500 that are up and still going. And to be in the top half, all you need is 20. So there's a lot of, of uh, I don't know if I go all the way to incompetent, but sir, let, let's say less than successful that aren't going to be successful. So if you're stuck in that situation, then take the lead. Get a group of franchisees together, talk it through, and get assistance because groups do better than individual. And even though I've been doing this for 51 years and and I may consider myself one of the best ever in franchising. I always seek out franchisees in, in making decisions and thinking things through because I don't deal with the customers. They deal with the customers. And they, the customers' needs are ever-changing, ever-evolving. And you need to include, include a lot of people in your decision-making. But get as many people as you can of, uh, in the system and uh, sit down and say, what's the most important thing? And you know what? You'll, you might come up with 20 or 30 or, or however many, and whittle it down to really, these are the key ingredients. It really doesn't matter if the, the wall is blue or the carpet is gray. That doesn't matter at the end of the day. That's not gonna cost a lot of customers. What, 
drives customers to your door and makes them satisfied. At the end of the day, I mean, so many, it's like, yeah, revenue, customers and revenue coming in the door. And that's what good franchisors, they, they allow their franchisees to focus on the things that are generating revenue for their business. Thank you for all that. I got a couple quick, just bonus questions, advice questions. And I, uh, just for myself personally, let's say there was a franchisee in any system and they wanted to be at the top performing franchisee. That was their goal. And let's say they had the DNA to do it. They, they were really going to do it. What advice would you have for this person to become a top performing franchisee in their particular system? With every franchise, we try to get what their goals are. If I want to do a hundred thousand dollars worth of revenue, or I might want a net profit of 475,000 or uh, whatever the number is that you need to seek the goals um, of your top people or all your people. And then if someone wants to be number one and about five or 10% of the people do, then you, you ask them, as you said, rank yourself on these items and then I'll rank you. And by the way, you always have, I'm extremely accessible CEO. You always have access to me. So when when you have a question that no one else in the organization asks, I want you to ask me. When you have a problem, I want you to tell me. What I want you to include me and uh, communicate with me. So I'm going to give you personal attention, but I'm going to hold you accountable and say, okay, you're not going to be number one if you don't do this. I mean, here's the key thing you're missing in there. And I'm personally going to give you advice and work with you to, to ensure that you can meet your goal. As you've seen different different brands, different industries now, and with different franchisees in there, is there a common theme that you see? Like the number one, could a number one person at at in the tax business be the number one person in a, in another business, or is is it the person, and is it just how they execute and how they do things and how they build, or is it industry specific? Many of the five thousand franchisees that are brought in have gone into other other franchise systems. And the superstars do super in whichever industry they pick. And the laggards do do pathetic in whatever industry they pick. So what I, I divide franchisees into three categories, the 5,000 I brought in. The superstars, the top 5%, you, you don't need to help them. They're, they're ahead of you. They're, they're, they're pulling you. They're not, they're not pushing at you. They're pulling you. So you take your superstars and then you have your, the people that are just pathetic and they won't do anything and they won't follow any advice and they know they're going to fail and they don't care. They don't care. And then you have the people in between. And then, so the people in between, I try to either move them out or to a superstar. I'm, I'm moving them in one day, direction or another. To answer that question simplistically, stars are stars and laggards are laggards. <laughs> that, that's very consistent. I've heard that from probably my first meal that you bought from me. Very consistent. That's one of the things I appreciate about you. I haven't, I haven't always liked you, what you were going to say or the advice that you give, but I knew it was always very consistent. And I appreciate that now. And I'm sure that people that are in my world don't always appreciate the advice that I give and, and, and what I say, but I hope that it's very consistent uh, like you. So John, it's always a pleasure to, uh, to talk with you and thank you for coming on my podcast. Eric, my pleasure. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Franchise Secrets Podcast. Whether you're watching or listening, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to whatever channel you're listening on. If you want my help with anything from buying a franchise to franchising your business, please visit FranchiseSecrets.com.